Volume's probably not up. Can you hear me? All right. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the one person who watches the notes like they're supposed to. All right, it's a 7-3 Oilers number. Oilers number is simply called E. It is roughly 2.72. If you'll look at your calculators right now, you will see there is an E button on there. Look for a key that says LN and then look in blue and you'll see it. Right above LN for natural log, you'll see E. So if I wanted to actually know the value of E and I could remember it was 2.72, I'd take E and I'd raise it to what power? The first power. Uh, I don't think so. That's the letter E. The one with divisor is supposed to be letter E. No, this one is the lowercase A, but it's... And like if you type in press enter, it gives you two point seven. That's kind of a surprise. Don't use that one. Okay. Don't use it. Anyways, two point seven two. It is irrational, which means that decimal continues forever. It is defined as follows in calculus. The letter, the number e, is the limit. As n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power. I'm sure that means nothing to y'all. The limit as n approaches positive infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power. Now, Euler, I think he lived in the 16th century, maybe 17th century. He took this thing out to like 300 decimal places by hand. Uh, which is pretty impressive because like if I want to know what this thing was like say I let n be 100 I rooftop it to the 100th power like that I don't even get to the true value of e do I so he probably had to write out something like a thousand now how do you raise something to a thousandth power by hand you write it a thousand times. So he had to figure out all these decimals and then multiply thousands of times. And he was, I don't know, I guess he, I guess he was a virgin. But he carried this thing out to like two or three hundred decimal places. He didn't have a wife and child, I can tell you that much. But, I mean, you can just think, even a thousand places, if we take this to the thousandth power, which means we write it a thousand times, we still don't get to the value of the calculator I stored, do we? So I, he did this out to hundreds of decimal places by hand. That's his number. One of the reasons it's his number. Uh, the applications of E are actually many. Uh, in Algebra 2, we'll study growth and decay problems and savings models. We might do logistics models. We will not do thresholds, eigenvalues. That's all upper-level math. Let's see. We actually do may do Newton's law of cooling, that's thermodynamics. But you know, that's a big one right there. Charge and capacitor. Why is that a big one? Power has a capacitor. Your phones have capacitors. All electronics have capacitors. So yeah. None of the stuff that you guys like exists without the letter or the number E. All right, so here's your basic introduction work with it. Working with expressions involving E. Uh, and we're, the goal here is simplification, not punch buttons on calculator. What is E to the fourth times E cubed? What are you allowed to do with the exponential space? Nope. E to the seventh. Oh, wait, no. This is e to the 4 plus 3, which is e to the 7th. You know, you guys have a, 
I haven't given you a form quiz in a while since everybody's in quarantine. But if you saw x to the a times x to the b, what are you allowed to do with your exponential space? Add them, and that's it. it says you can add them. It doesn't say you can do anything else with it. It says add them. You know, here, x is e. So add them. All right, how about twice e to the fourth power times 12 e to the negative third power? That is 24 e to the negative 7. We are allowed to multiply the numbers themselves. And I would still count this wrong. What do you got, Austin? Awesome? Nope. Only the e has the negative exponent. Only the e moves. 24's understood exponent was what? 1. It had an understood exponent. An understood positive exponent. It does not move. Only things with negative exponents move. All right, C is 10 times e to the negative 3x raised to the third power. Grant, what are you allowed to do with that 3? Move it in. Both pieces? Yes. 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 There's not a plus sign in between. It's not a minus sign in between. It's a multiplier sign in between. Both pieces get that cubing. This is 10 cubed, e to the negative 3x, cubed again, multiplication of 3. What is 10 cubed? 1,000. e to what power now? It's wrong, Trey. What's the x going above e? Negative 3x. Look at your paper, son. Anything wrong with this answer? Negative on e. Where does it actually belong? Bottom. How about thousands? Does it move? No. Thousand has a positive exponent. Do you know what it is? Is it equal to anything? Is there an equal sign? Then you can't figure it out. All right, D is a simple simplification problem. It's 24 over 4. 6. Now, you have properties, x to the a over x to the b, like terms and division. What do you do with the exponential space? You subtract. You subtract. x to the a minus b. So what's bigger, e to the ninth or e to the fifth? So take away from e to the ninth. What is 9 minus 5? 4. So 6e to the fourth power. It's just simplification. All it is, trying to reinforce exponential rules. Oh, we got to graph one. Is that the only one you have to graph? Good. Because I know you all love graphing. Uh, I can't do these in my head. Well, I will be using a calculator for these because these have funny looking decimal, right? I mean, I'm going to use a calculator for this. Uh, main thing is the formation of your tables. How are you supposed to shift? Right two and up one. Sean, you're not going to y equals, are you? Please don't. Like, so many kids like to argue with me, and then they go to engineering school, and they all come back to me like, you're right, I shouldn't have pressed so many buttons on the calculator. Like, I mean this. Like, I know what I'm doing here. Every time you punch a button in your calculator, you're not thinking. Right? Is that right? Yes. Try to minimize it. Try to minimize it. You know, if you want to get ripped and built, you know, you don't dream about weightlifting. You don't watch somebody else weightlift. What do you do? You weightlift. You don't watch a YouTube video on it unless you're worried about form. Or maybe that's your thing, watching dudes lift heavy weights. I don't know. This sounds like Tom. <laughs> Hey, we're on video here. No calling people fags. <laughs> About the way I went. That's for sure. I was the wrong way.
You go right to, don't you? Why do you think I threw away my notes, sir? Did I even write that down? Did I write right to? I didn't go that direction. You go right to and up one. What x value is this graph centered on? It's centered on two. And I would just go two from two before and two after. Now, I want to talk about this thing, too. Uh, you graph things like two to the x, right? They look like that. If you saw a negative two to the x, it wouldn't look like that. It looked like that you're going to have to apply some curvature to whatever point you plot. You need to understand that. You're going to apply some curvature to whatever point you plot. I'm going to use a storage feature. I'm going to take a good old zero and store it to X. And I'm going to type in the function self, E. And again, play along because otherwise you're going to be that kid who takes a test and you don't even know where the E button is. It's going to happen. It happens every year. I didn't actually need any parentheses on my calculator. I'm trying to show the correct use of parentheses right here. If you do need parentheses, if you do need parentheses, that's how you type that in. Anyways, I got about 5.48, 5.5. And one of the nice things about using a storage feature is that you don't have to retype every single thing. Did you type in the parentheses just like I did? Sean, you got it? Do you remember the plus one? Found it. Anyway, I stored my one, second enter, second enter. 3.1. Take my two, store it to X, second enter, second enter. Two. Be the only nice one you see. The rest of them are all ugly. 1.5. Of course you get closer to one. Just like the last two days, it is functioning as a asymptote. That is cumulative. Are you using a storage feature? Point seven five is negative. All right, so this is taking way too long. Zero five point five. One three point one. Two two. Three one point five. Four one point two. So this thing's coming in from up high, and as it approaches this, this horizontal dashed line, what's it going to do? Get close to it at flat lines. It's just like the last two days of class. So I was trying to say I mentioned that because it is functioning as a what? Asymptote. What's the equation of that asymptote? Y equals what? One. It's just exponential functions. That's all it is. Uh, what's the domain of this thing? What's its range? One to infinity. The same thing you've been doing, kids. It's just the letter E or the number E. 
All right, application here, one about biology. And then we'll talk about a new formula. Let's see, the length L in centimeters of a tiger shark can be modeled by the following function. Length is 337 minus 276e to the negative 178 thousandths of t, where t is the shark's age in years. Part A is using technology, graph the model, and determine the length of a tiger shark that is three years old. There's a reason I have this that says use technology and to do it with a graph. I wanted to show you something. I had to remember what it was. So play along. We're not putting anything in. We're not putting three in Y1. L stands for what? Length, not years. Okay. Just says graph it. 337 minus 276 e to the negative and I'll show it using parentheses negative 0.187 x all dyslexia So again, if your calculator doesn't raise up in the exponential space, you just use parentheses. You'll be all right. Uh, when you look at this graph, zoom six isn't going to do you any good. You're not going to see what you want to see. How far up do you need to look? Why 400? 337. It's, it's 337 minus something, right, kids? Maybe. Actually, it's probably going to be plus, but Y max, I'd say at least 400. Tiger sharks grow. This thing ought to grow with time. Eventually, it does level out. Now, the reason I asked you this with technology is because there's a function in your calculator. It's under second trace value. Second trace value, it's the first one you see. It says, give me an X value. Second trace value, what am I asking you to do? How old is the shark going to be? Why did you say two? <laughs> you want to know how old the shark is, is? How long the shark is when it's three years old? You say X is three. That shark's about 175.2 centimeters. B is determine the age of a tiger shark that has a length of 220 centimeters. Now, on paper, what you do is you'd plug that in for L. You'd say 220 equals. You have to understand that's what you'd do by hand. Even if you're not going to do it by hand, you have to understand that is what you would do by hand. Because that is a length. It has to go in for length. Do you know the age? No. That's the goal. You have to leave T as a variable. Now, this is a situation we do a Y1, Y2 thing, right? Now, I've already got this in Y1, which is fine. If it's in Y1, where does this go? Y2. doesn't matter order there. One of them in Y1 and one of them in Y2. It is actually nicer if the number is in Y1. Our window is going to be tall enough to see 220, isn't it? So nothing wrong with our window. And we don't even have to look to the right. We didn't have to change our window. Because 400 was already our Y max, which is tall enough to see a 220. Second trace five for an intersect. All you gotta do is get close, and once you're close, how many times you press enter? A little late now, kids. Like, I've been on this thing for five minutes now. Three three seven minus two seven six e rooftop parentheses negative one point seven eight x close parentheses. J 
your equation match, Dylan? There's the issue. All right, yesterday you learned the formula for compound interest. Actually, it wasn't yesterday, it was two days ago. What was the formula for compound interest? That's one of the most important formulas in your life. That compounds interest n times per year. Uh, if you compound interest nonstop every billionth of a billionth of a billionth of a second over the course of a year, if you actually compound the interest an infinite number of times per year, you get a slightly different formula. It has to deal with the definition of E, which is known as paper, but E was limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power, which looks kind of like the bit of the compound interest formula, doesn't it? You get the continuously compound interest formula, which says the amount after time passes is P E raised to the RT. Notice that R and T are exponents. It's not P E R T, it's P E raised to the RT. Because some kids will write R and T on the same level as E and miss it every single time. They are exponents. Pert, which used to be a fairly popular shampoo. It's called Pert Plus. Up until about six years ago, everybody remembers that their dad had Pert Plus in the shower. And nobody remembers anymore, so nobody remembers Pert. Yeah, pretty easy. I couldn't tell you. It was cheap crap. That's why everybody used it. But it's a shampoo. Pert. This is the continuously compounded interest formula. Now, how do you know when to use it? Notice it's called the continuously compounded interest formula. You're looking for continuously compounded. Like the first example in our text. You deposit $5,500 into an account that pays 8% interest compounded continuously. Because I see the word continuously, what am I using? Hurt. That means over the course of a single year, the interest is compounded an infinite number of times. Exactly. You're probably not old enough to understand that. Just use that formula. Don't worry about what it means. You see the word continuously, you use per. What's P? 500. E to the R. What's R? 0 0.08. Thank you for using a decimal. And actually, we know the time in this one. 10. That's just something type in the calculator, isn't it? Five hundred. That E button, second natural log. Uh, you might need parentheses. You'd have, and if you don't know what 0 0.08 times 10 is, if you don't realize that's 0 0.8, whatever, just type 0 0.08 times 10. Calculator's not going to judge you. Wouldn't it be nice if it did, though? <laughs> that, or they'd figure some stuff out. Well, it does give me an error. I'm telling you, if the calculator called you an effing moron, you'd start learning stuff. Like, you wouldn't be that little girl I saw type in 13 plus 0. <laughs> I just love how Trent woke up when he said that. I was using function notation. What do you think I was saying? F of N? No? All right, maybe we can talk about the last one. Suppose you loan a friend $2,000 at 8.9% compounded continuously. The deal is he will pay you back the day it has doubled. How long he pay, How long until he pays you back your $2,000 plus interest? He's going to pay you back the day it doubles. What does it become? 4000 
That has to equal the initial amount, 2,000, that's your principal, and it is compounded continuously, so times E, right? What's the power of that E? 0, 8, 9, and what don't you know? Time. Now, the bell is about to ring. I can, all I can do is talk about the setup. Where are you going to put 4,000? Y1. Where are you going to put the rest of this stuff? Y2. And if you don't have a calculator, kids, go talk to the librarian. He will give you one. He is actually checking them out. Yes, you can download one on your phone, because I use one on the board all the time, don't I? It's called Wabbit Emu. Yeah, it's only a droid thing. <laughs> yes, you can put it on your laptop if you got a school laptop. Wabbit Emu, W-U-B-B-I-T-E-M-U. <laughs> EMU stands for emulator.